Hello, hi, what's up? Welcome to the stream. 581 streams. Dang. Uh, what I'm working on today is the Lightning Boss. The problem with the Lightning Boss, well, there's been a lot of improvements made to the Lightning Boss of late. She's a lot less difficult than she used to be. She used to be kind of like crazy difficult. Um, even though it's the 10th boss of the game, almost at the very end of the game. She was more difficult than the bosses in the tower, which came after her. So some some refinements have been made to her her AI and stuff like that. But there's one simple visual thing that could be made um, to her is like her her death. Basically, she doesn't actually die, but when she, when you actually defeat her, she plays this uh, animation where she disappears, and basically, you know, some other story stuff happens after that. So she doesn't die; she just disappears. Um, but that happens so quickly. That as a player, you're you're in the heat of battle. You're like playing hard. You're just fighting this crazy hard boss. It's super difficult. Boom! You beat her, and it just happens so quickly that um, it's like pff, don't blink. So what I'm doing now is making it so that whole death sequence is just um, way more drawn out and noticeable. So that should be a pretty simple thing. Just changing one animation. Um, she's in shadow, I believe. Lightning boss release. Oh, she did, this is a doesn't use this anymore. Oh, maybe she just uses disappear then. Let's find out. Yeah, okay, it just reverses her um, up here. So we're going to go ahead and change this to use her, her release. What's his delay is 0. Point, mm, yeah, we'll keep it at point 0.2, so it's like, and not reversed, and we don't need that anymore. Okay, so this was an old animation. We can just um, move that. That's like what she would do if she died. And we'll copy lightning boss up here. Wait, is there a disappear? No. Wait, is there more than one? Oh, right, there's the steel up here. She appears with her thing. Lightning boss up here. All right. Cool. Now we got the right animation. So this is, needs to be reversed first of all, and then we're going to make this all drawn out and give it some real like drama. Boogie, what's up, man? How's it going? How you been? What's new? All right, now first let's just see if this, um, you been good? I've been good too, man. Made some crazy cool strides lately with the game psychologically it's been uh, a real challenging crucible style 
you know, the last month has been crazy because I had to get the game all like finalized. Like I had to actually commit to things and be like, you know what? I can't change Songbringer fundamentally from this point on. So it was crazy scary and terrifying and lots of bugs, lots of stress. Um, it was a very, very stressful moment. But I just finally got through all that and got through it psychologically. So I'm not as stressed. So it's like, that's really good. I'm finally able to kind of like get back into a smooth flow. What's up, Dami Killer? Mount Zero, that's a cool name. Hello, Mount Zero. Mount um, SD Zero. Yeah, totally. It's on schedule for sure. Yeah. Um, that's a good feeling, right? Songbringers on schedule, progress is being made. You know, um, the guy, the team at Double Eleven, they're working really hard on the uh, the Xbox version and the PlayStation version. So that's great. I don't have to really worry about that. They can kind of handle that whole part. Um, they're helping allow it in a lot of other ways too. They're doing a lot of like quality assurance. So that that really helps too to like help me like psychologically. Is like there's a whole team. Of people that are it's like it's their job just to make sure that songbringer is good quality and so that that is really really nice too yeah so what's new man what's new in your world she go in shadow or bosses Have I seen it? Yes, I have. You got jury duty? Damn. Oh. Damn, I hate I hate jury duty Judy. Uh, yeah, at the um at the March event, um at GDC there was a Microsoft event called the ID at Xbox Live or Loft event. And that was really neat. Um, they so Double Eleven got the whole Xbox uh, version running back then, and so I got to play Songbringer on Xbox then. Um, and then I got to play it at, on the PlayStation at uh, PAX. So that was cool. <laughs> okay, I think this goes in shadow. Let's get this prepped and then draw this animation. I think it goes here. It's just, yeah, that's it. That's it. Lighting boss release. Replace the existing. What did that add? One file. Looking good. All right, we want to be at. Oh, not this, not this save. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got the jug mount. I got it. Mega seed. Hmm, doesn't matter. Position. We gotta be at six, five, ten to fight that boss. Can't have her already defeated. We can't have Vel. Ah, uh, no ending, no ship fall. Good. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm just making the lightning boss's death or her exit. Um, much more drawn out. So right now it happens, it can happen in the blink of an eye practically that she just disappears. You're like, what happened? So I'm trying to make this really nice and long and drawn out so you can notice that she, you defeated her. Got 
Hey, so are you guys, what's, um, what's the new, ex what are you guys excited about for E3? E3 is coming up like next week. Um, I am going to be on this show. I'm going to be on a uh, Twitch show. Um, Twitch is having a thing called the pre pre show. You guys have probably heard of it. Um, but they did it last year, right before E3. They actually did it all night last year. Um, actually I think it's, it's like a freaking huge long stream. It's a crazy, crazy long stream. But anyways, they're having the E3 Twitch pre pre show and yours truly is going to be on it. I'm pretty excited about that. I'll also be part of a panel. There's some panel that Engadget's doing, um, on violence and gaming. So I'll be part of that. And then I'll also be at E3 just demoing the game a little bit and sharing with the press and stuff. It's your third time getting jury duty like this year? Forgot about E3. Yeah, I know. It's it's like it's crazy. This year E3 is all in is like in June. Last year was in like early May. It feels like it's like much later. It's like easy to forget, you know, when they change it like that. Oh, and then like the last five years? Well, that's pretty cool. That's not that much. I've got called into jury duty like at least once a year. Okay, so the thing is, her death here is not noticeable, so I'm just gonna cheat a lot here and just like kill her really quick and watch her death. <laughs> Whoops. It looks like I should have erased her frames. Okay, so that's raw sheets, shadow, lightning boss, release, star. Get those out of there. And we can't have this background. I think I could just build. Yeah, cool. I got a shortcut for that. Death Stranding. Whoa. Deals with black holes. Dang, crazy. Look at the graphics on this one, man. Jeez, just look at that. Look at the like subtle difference between the emotion on this face. It's crazy. This is like, the games these days are next level, man. Like, Breath of the Wild. Um, what's the other really awesome one that just came out like in March? Horizon Dawn. Mass Effect. This one, Death Stranding. Yeah, cool. Wait, who, which one's Hideo? Let me look that up. What games has he been part of making? Oh, Metal Gear, that's right. Yeah, Metal Gear. Oh, and also Castlevania, wow. Okay, so we got that rendered. Let's just make sure that doesn't have a black or gray background. And what do I need to do to this animation? I just need to like make it long and drawn out. So she could, she, oh, I know what I could do. I could do some kind of like animation where she really looks like she's getting hurt. And then she just teleports away. Oh, this is, it saved the ending. Gotta do that.
Yeah, so you can tell that was like, you couldn't even tell if she was, you can tell that you couldn't tell. Okay, she's got a hurt animation already, I think. That might need to be better too, but. Oh, Far Cry 5, yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah, that's what that's one of the things I love about E3 and and GDC. It's always so cool to see what new games are coming out. A lot of studios are, you know, doing tons of promotion and getting people hyped for their games. It's nice to see what's coming out. I'm thinking changing the hue here might be a cool idea when she's hurt, so you can tell. Oh, this is contiguous. Like, why is this not selecting all the pixels? Do a huge shift. Maybe blue, or maybe maybe orange. That's kind of interesting. Look at the blue. Okay, maybe this blue one, if it were less, oh, see, it changes completely if you, oh, uh, that's kind of interesting, actually. Huh, let's try that. It's almost grays her out. Lady boss hurt, zero, sheets, shadow. Okay, I'm going to try her out like that, so it might be more noticeable when she's being hurt. And then... You can do something like this, like throw this frame into the beginning of this animation. Try out the graphics tablet and do some pixel art here. I want her to look like she's just like really getting hurt dramatically.
Hmm. Well, I guess I got to take a look at it so far before I get too deep in this. I do want to do like maybe like three or four more frames right now, but I'm not sure if this animation's on the the right track, so I'm gonna check it out. That does look good, having her like totally change her her color when she gets hit. You can definitely tell that she's actually being hurt. Okay, now let's let's go ahead and kill her. Oh, she gets there we go, that's a good place for her. Wait, did that actually kill her? Oh, I didn't even kill her. <laughs> I was like, she didn't do the animation, but it's because she didn't die. Okay, yeah, that's going to look pretty good. I do need to just finish this animation out. And I do think that'll look nice. So just some intermediary frames to go between here and there.
What's up, Eves? I'm doing good, man. How about you? How you doing? I saw some of your gifts on um, on Twitter lately. Your game's looking good, man. Nice, it's good to hear. Outland, yeah. Which one's Outland? Oh, this looks fun. Oh, cool. <laughs> Free game! It looks fun, though. I can't wait to try that. Oh, there's not really a lot of content, though? That's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be at E3. Um, I'm going to be demoing Songbringer. I'm going to be sharing it with the press. And I'll be on uh, Twitch's pre-pre-show and I'll be at another little event. So yeah, it's pretty exciting to be going to E3. Um, I'm really thankful to my publisher, Double Eleven, uh, for you know hooking all this up, having the funds to be able to do this. I mean, this just going to E3 alone could cost five thousand dollars just to not even have a booth for me, just me to go and share with people. You know, having a booth that's even more. Now you're jumping up into the tens of thousands of dollars. Definitely something an indie developer like me could not afford. So it's really nice to have not just not just funds, but like everything else Double Eleven does too is pretty cool. They're they're awesome. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Dreams coming true here. And also, you know, another thing, it wouldn't be, none of this would have been possible without the Kickstarter backers. So thank you again, Kickstarter backers. You kicked this all off, literally. Okay, let's see how this plays. Okay, this might look alright. So, the whole point here is just to make the, the ending there look a little bit more dramatic and drawn out. And I think it's doing that. Um, I'm going to run this here. And I... I'm expecting that this will be about the right, at least the right duration, you know, enough frames. And But if it's not, I'll have to add some frames and then maybe refine them a little bit and that's it. How's my trail list going? The end is in sight, but um, I'll, sh I'll share with you. I actually had a pretty much a crisis moment with it. Um, it's It's been years, man, since I had such a huge breakdown stress-wise. Um, and I realized I was stressing myself out so much by setting that 15 minute timer, but no, no, that wasn't, that wasn't really the thing that what I was stressing myself out was, was I was thinking this in my mind. I was like, if I could just get both of my, my important lists, my important list here, the fix one and the create one, these two lists, this later one, I'm not as concerned about cause this could be done later, but I was thinking, all right, if I can get both these lists under 20 items, then I'll be happy then I'll be fulfilled, you know, then I'll, then I will like, then I'll feel okay about stuff. But I stopped and realized that this is a complete fallacy. It's never going to happen. Every time I go and add, you know, or, or I, every time I go and fix 20 of these, I add 40. 
You know what I mean? I'll go, I'll go fix a ton of things, release a new game, you know, release a new version on Steam, go put it out, play it. I'll go and spend like three hours playing it and, and you know, enjoying myself, exploring the world of Songbringer. And then I'll be like, oh my God, there's 40 more things on my list now. And it always freaked me out. It would, it would just like be such a huge psychological weight. So I realized that all I got to do is just be happy with whatever gets done and be happy doing what I'm doing rather than being happy if I get enough things done. Steve Tramby, what's up, man? Yeah, I'm going to be at E3. It's pretty exciting. How you been, Steve? I was thinking about Brutus the other day and how much he likes gin. Yeah, so E3, I got a I got a special demo I've built for E3. So for it, um, like it packs back in March or whatever, we had a demo, and the packs demo, um, you couldn't choose a world seed because we kind of like wanted it to, to you know like Q and A a certain world, make sure it played well. But this one's pretty cool because we're just letting people play whatever, like whatever world seed they want. You can drop into the demo. The demo version starts you with like bombs, sword, top hats. So you have a lot of the items because. You're really trying to get the five-minute version of Songbringer, but what's really neat is it gets across the point that it's a procedurally generated game by allowing the person, the player, to choose a world seed before they start their five-minute experience or whatever, you know. So you get to choose your world seed. You drop into a world. There's two bosses there, um, which are, you know, it actually does green dots where the bosses are located, so you can kind of have a little, you know, a taste of what Songbringer will be like. That's exciting. And yeah, and then also at E3, I'll be on this the Twitch pre-pre-show, which I'm excited about. They did the Twitch pre-pre-show last year. Um, and uh, yeah, and then also I'll be on this Engadget panel thing talking about violence and gaming. So I'm kind of nervous about that one. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yep. Oh, that too. Yeah, I added a little bit of story dialogue that kind of explains why you start with those items right because that was something i always had to explain to people when they're playing it at pax you know i was always like okay here you go play this but just note that it's a procedurally generated game and you're starting with a bunch of items but now it kind of like is self-explanatory starting a v1 trello column and start fleshing out what gets cut bugs he's fixing no that's already been done um that uh, so I'm working with Double Eleven, you know, to get this all ready for PlayStation and for Xbox, and they have their own bug tracking system. So I'm I'll, all of my um, all of my fix cards are that way. So everything in my fix list is for 1.0, and then all my things in the create list will go for like 1.1 or whatever, and then everything after that will be like 1.2 and stuff like that. So yeah, this is my 1.0 list right here. And then, so when I go and I cross off a bug on here, I also have to go cross it off kind of like on their system too. But, um, yep. Yeah, we're, we're at that phase right now. So basically Songbringer is kind of locked in. All the worlds will be exactly as they are right now. There'll be no more changes to the worlds. Um, there'll be no more changes, no more significant changes to gameplay. So that was, I was terrifying to be like, to have to commit to that, but that's that's done you know what i mean so i'm, I'm excited about that because the world's it's kind of nice to have the world's locked down at this point because i i can find if i if there is a particular bug that i have to fix by fixing worlds i can find a way to fix it without affecting all the worlds so it's kind of nice to have it all locked down because it's kind of like a good i don't know it's a reassurance or i don't know it just feels feels good to have it all to not have to worry about changing worlds on people and stuff like that but yeah, it was kind of terrifying there for a minute to think, oh my gosh, I can't really change sig gameplay significantly from here on out. But now that I'm I'm over it and I've played the game enough to be like, you know what, I'm, I'm confident that this version, this gameplay will be good. Yeah, yeah, nice to be in this phase. How about, how about you, man? What's new? What's been going on? Okay, so I'm going to run it, and we'll see how that animation looks. Cool. 
Cool, that looks all right. I, the only part of that could have been better, I thought, would be this bit here where she go, takes her arms and they go in and out, kind of. Let's flip her arms around for all these frames. So she looks more like this. All right, and her, her, her tail or whatever this thing is needs to kind of come back to how this tail is going to be. Okay, I think now I just gotta move her arms. Might be nice to actually have her head a little bit changed, tilted. You wish more, yeah? Oh, 
Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I hear you there. I hear you. Oh, you were? Yeah. Cool. Really? So Coco City's been stalling for a while, huh? I really, I haven't even updated it. No, it's still long. I can't update it at this point. I got to stick with the version I'm at. You been doing some volunteer coding? Sweet. Whoa. Handmade Hero Network pre-draft educational books? Oh, right. Yeah, I know. It, well, I know it's like when you got some game projects, sometimes that. Oh, right. Yeah, VR has been, it's been such a hot topic. And especially like, a dude, GDC is just so, everybody's, you know, everybody's talking about VR. Everybody's pushing for VR. Like, it's, it's a huge thing right now in the game dev scene but i hear you when it comes to like what generation to be working on because i really haven't you know it's like it's not really that prevalent yet the first generation devices are going to be you know bigger clunkier more expensive Steve, what about um, what what games are you excited about right now? Or is there anything coming up at E3 you're excited for? Oh right, the Coco's Creator. Yeah, they've been on that trend for so long. It's like, yeah, for their business. I don't either. I don't give a I don't give a rat's ass about browser games. I mean, making browser games. <laughs> right? All right, the three hundred fifty dollars sell the game. Uh, you did, yeah. What did you think about the Cocos JavaScript version? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought there for a minute that like the Coco Sudi JS and that the whole JavaScript thing, I thought that was gonna be like the future, right? Like everybody was gonna be making games in JavaScript, but then I then I realized the truth. Yes, right. That is pretty nice, and I'm sure it's so much better than it used to be. When I I guess when I was first exploring it, like. There wasn't there wasn't very good uh, auto complete. There wasn't very good IDEs for. Or there was I guess there was no plugin for, you know. Auto completing JavaScript code. Uh huh. The physics engine. Yeah right. I know yeah. They do have a box 2D and wait, maybe they don't. I don't know what the JavaScript version uses for its physics, but I know they I don't know the C++ version has box 2D or chipmunk. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. But oh, but not in JS. That's right. Yeah. What the heck do they are using for the JavaScript version then? Maybe they had to like I don't know. Okay, let's see this in the game.
Yeah, they're moving away from that whole medium level thing. Or, you know, any kind of game that's a little bit more like, you know, more involved than a, a five minute, 15 minute mobile kind of experience. Hmm. Okay, hopefully this is good now. Just want to see her die. Not die, just disappear. I guess that was good enough. I kind of... I kind of want to see that animation run a little slower, actually. Let's do 1.5 instead of 0.2 for each frame. Oh, I'm probably going to need to change the... Got to turn off this boss every time. It saves the game as soon as you... As soon as you defeat her, because there's a story thing happening. Okay, I want to work on the lightning strike park, actually. Oh, the documentation, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whoa, what? I just pressed, like, the X key, and it closed my window. That was weird. Okay, this lightning strike right here. I don't know, something about it. It's like, it looks too messy here. It's almost like it should go behind. And then get a little. Yeah, that looks a little better. Oh, yeah. The test pro- I never really looked at the test project too much. Wait. Oh, yeah, I did. Of course I did. I guess I never really looked at the documentation, though, in the test project. Whoa. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, once you once you used it and you got familiar with it, that's like when you're Like the familiarity is like, it's underrated. 
in my opinion. It really makes a huge difference if you're familiar with an engine. Rocket Bunny, what's up, buddy? Oh, they did? That's cool. Oh, that's great. That's really, really great to hear. I find, I'm glad they finally fixed all the, the new audio engine stuff, the experimental. That was, um, gosh. I wish that would have been part of the old Coco City X stuff, but I switched to FMOD and I never will look back, man. FMOD's it's got too much power, too much awesomeness. D you been DJing? Yes, you, you been D you been doing your Dutch DJing? Like Noisia? Oh, you got you got you're a fan of like other Dutch artists, huh? What are what are your favorite artists again? What's his name? Mm. Oh yeah, Martin Garrix. That's right. I like Noisia, man. They're all they're all uh they're all Dutch. Noisia, what's a oh? There's another like Dutch artist I just discovered that was that, like really really enjoyed their work. I forget what it, I can't remember whether it was. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I listen to Noisia radio a lot. I love Noisia. I love drum and bass. Okay, hopefully that looks a little bit better quality. Boom. Yeah, that does look better. The lightning is outside of her. What's this? Is this your SoundCloud? Rocket Bunny, nice man. That's your working music? Cool. I know, it's great working music, right? Am I gonna get like, did you copyright your music? Oh, it's a mixtape. Oh, uh, I can't play mixtapes on the stream. I'll get flagged. But I'll save your SoundCloud, man. I'll check it out later on, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, that's cool. That would be neat, Eves. Yeah, I could rework this whole thing and do that, but it's a really great idea. I'll consider that. Right, the lightning like, oh yeah, I couldn't, I wouldn't have to really rework it. I guess I could just have it like travel over her body. But let's see how it looks so far. <laughs> Plays an air horn. You gotta have an air horn, man, for just those moments where it's air horn moment.
okay. I look pretty good. Let's try it out. So it hits there. It goes, we got basically, basically one, two, three, we got four frames we could do. So maybe the first frame is that it just hits her from the outside. And then the second frame, Second frame, we'll do new layers. Test this out really quick. See if it, see if it's a, see how it looks. Okay, and this needs to be about 70%. And then now we can kind of move these trails. See how that looks, just adding those couple frames. Yeah, I don't think it I don't think it changes that much. Um like it doesn't like, you know, like it doesn't hurt the animation. I think it definitely helps. It adds a little bit of like electricity moving across her body. It's probably not perfect. I could have drawn that better, but just for now I think it's okay to throw in there. So let's do it. Put it in. All right, I think you're almost done, almost done with this little task. This is more of a creative task. Creative tasks can take a little bit longer than the the fix it tasks. Well, it totally depends, I guess. Fix it tasks can take forever too. Okay, cool. I like that. It just gives the it gives their it gives you a, your eyes a moment to notice her, 
and tell that she has been defeated. So that's the whole point. And it's good. It gives you, there's probably like an extra six or seven frames in there, which is maybe up to like a second at 0.15 seconds a frame. It's, yeah, it's almost a second worth of visuals for your eye to connect with before, so you can like, you can basically tell what the hell's going on. And it looks different than her other animation too. Yeah, I like that. Okay, checking it in. This is good for, you know, good enough for now. Okay. Let's check this in. Ron Branch Dev. Okay, good. That's where I need to be to check this in. Let's commit this. Archive that. Boom. Okay. Well, what do I got next to, to do? Some more bugs. Some more creativity. I guess I could start working on refining the intro outro. Kaz the gamer, what's up, man? Yeah, it's been a minute. How you doing? It's coming along very well. It's basically almost 1.0 at this point. Uh, the worlds are locked down. The gameplay is locked down. There'll be no more world changes, no more gameplay changes. Sombre 1.0 will be very soon. And the release date, we'll probably announce it somewhat soon. I mean, we're, it's going to be coming out this summer, so we got to have a release date. I don't, know, I don't know exactly when we'll have a release date, but that should be relatively soon. Okay, I can do about 15 more minutes on today's stream. <laughs> the last day of summer. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you for these words. Appreciate it. Okay, the second jib standing thing needs a slower animation. So we're gonna go turn on the skip to intro so it just goes right to playing the intro. Make this fast. All right, now the thing I'm gonna be editing is flux phase intro. And the first one I'm going to be looking at is jib standing. The second one, he, what is it? Oh yeah, I know what it's thought. What? Okay, so jib standing. There it is. Okay, so it does string base jib standing A or jib standing B. Jib standing B should be the second one. And then, oh yeah, set delay per unit is the first one. It's 0 0.909. Oh, okay. I just didn't do the same kind of thing for this animation. So let's try and make that one also. Wait, now first, first I'll change nothing. Just run it. Look at Jib in the intro. And this second animation probably needs to be 0 0.909 as well. Oh hell yes. Yeah, I'll be I'll be continue streaming for sure. 
I'll continue streaming the yeah while I'm doing updates and also there'll be if if Songbreaker succeeds, um, I will be doing either, um, either. Okay, yeah, that definitely needs to be like point nine oh nine. I'll either do um, like an expansion, so some either like a DLC style expansion, maybe charge for it, maybe release it free. I don't know. Or, um, or I could drop straight into doing Songbringer 2. I'm not exactly sure which one of those things I'll do yet. Um, and, it, and that's all kind of dependent on how well Songbringer does at launch. So, Thanks, man. Okay, that was a tiny bit. That was like almost too slow. Maybe both of these need are too a little bit too slow. Let's change this to zero point eight. Try it again. Would I do the next game in Coco's 2D? That's a great question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, probably, but what I'm considering for the next game is actually writing an engine abstraction layer. So we kind of, I'll be able to drop in different engines. <laughs> So like it's just a layer that kind of like um, that abstracts away Coco's 2D. Like all I'm using with Coco's 2DX is the renderer and the actions and the platform setup code. Those those three things. I mean, there's like 80 to 90 percent of Coco's 2D I'm not even using. There's so much stuff in Coco's 2DX. Um, so I want to write an abstraction layer that kind of like I don't even need to include Coco's 2DX It just all I include is my abstraction layer and I can put that into a library and pre-build it and stuff so and then it would be nice to be able to like you know build the game with um, with either my with either Coco's 2DX or like SDL or something like that and just be able to throw in a different game engine into the ab underneath the abstraction layer so I kind of have my own like just API, and it would probably look a lot like how Coco's 2D's API works. I kind of am really familiar with the whole nodes and scenes and layers and sprites and labels and stuff like that, so I'd probably keep it all the naming pretty similar, but I would just wouldn't have to use Coco's 2D namespace at all. Everything would be subclass or encapsulated, like a node would just be my own kind of node class that maybe encapsulated another or a Cocos 2D node or a SDL node or whatever, you know, whatever that concept would mean in a different engine. Okay, I like that. That's a little bit a tiny bit less delay for the other one and a little and more for the uh, for the first one, so that part's done. Let's do the next bit. Making the ship look faster in the intro. Right? Yeah. Node's got a lot a lot of in it. Doesn't it? This is I'm I'm only looking at Coco Studio X 3.9 here. I'm not even I don't even know what's in 315. It's 3 it's 15 now, huh? Isn't it? Or it's not 16 yet. I'm so far behind. I did try an update to Coco Studio X 13 back in December. But I spent one day on it and realized that there I would need to spend two days on it. So I was like, screw that. I'm just going to stick with 3.9. And now that now that the guys at Double Eleven are working on the PlayStation and the and the Xbox version, I can't change. Oh yeah, it's 3.15.1. Oh yeah, well that's good. 
said that makes it pretty I, I can't remember what what I ran into. It's like every time I try and upgrade Coco's 2DX, something breaks significantly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's another thing. So many people have tested this this these DLLs. You know what I mean? This this compile of Coco's 2D and all that. I don't want to change. I don't want to go like upgrade and be like, whoops, sorry, bugs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's make the ship look faster. The ship, this bit, the ship could at least go across the screen faster. It moves. This is the ship and its glow. It move by. Oh, this is the up and down motion. Here's the motion of it. Okay. This moves. Let's try doubling that. Whoops. <laughs> I think it just typed 324, 324s. Right there. I love it when you accidentally press something in Vim and stuff like that happens. There's been things I've accidentally pressed in Vim that just changed, like, <laughs> changed my code so much with like two or three keystrokes like all of the code changed. Like I think it did some kind of justification and just changed all the alignment and stuff. I'm like, what did I press? <laughs> so much, so much power. I don't even know about in Vim. Powerful text editing. Yeah, this is looking good with him. He's like, all he's doing is just breathing a little bit right there. And the timing of that animation feels a lot better. That's good, okay. Now let's look at the ship here. I want the ship to feel faster. I've doubled its motion, so let's see how. Oh yeah, that definitely is faster. Okay, let's do it. I was starting a little bit to the right now. Pause. 100, let's try. 200. Oh, is it? Wait, Xcode 9? What did they do in Xcode 9? I haven't fully switched. I still use Xcode for debugging. I always have it open in the background because I'm always setting breakpoints and debugging. I love Xcode's debugger. And there's certain things about Xcode that are just better, you know? Like, I love how Xcode shows me defines in brown. I can't figure out how to get Vim to show those differently than, than like, a normal keyword. Oh, is it? Oh, it's beta? Oh, that's why I don't have it. I was, like, asking. Oh, yeah, I'm at 832. Nice. I like that. The ship came across the screen a lot faster there. All right, Eves. We'll see you, man. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for saying hi. Good night, brother. Whoops. <laughs> I can't type today. Well, you know what? That's probably what I'm actually done with my stream too because 
I did that one and I did that one, but these two are the outro. And um, I don't want to do any more spoilers. All right, well, I won't do any spoilers on today's stream. I don't want to spoil anything. So these are two quick things I'll just do off stream. So there we go. I did it. This is pretty nice. Got a few things accomplished today creatively. That's always fun. It's always fun to do creative stuff because it kind of boosts my morale, which is a really nice thing to do. It's not, it's not good. Uh, uh, well, all uh, right. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's stream. Oh, cool. I'll check that out. Nice. All right, so thanks a lot for watching, everybody. And um, we'll catch you all next time, next stream. I don't, I'll don't. i be doing a few more streams this week, and then next week I'll be at E3, so I won't be doing streams then, but I'll still be tweeting and stuff. So I appreciate it, you all, everybody. We'll see y'all next time.